This cart conference timer. will now be recorded. And you your cart you. timer is no, I Connor, thank you for remembering or we would have had what happened last time and gone halfway through and then realized. So I'm, <laughs> I'm glad we're starting <laughs> with, the, with the information this time. So again, you're looking at your general products uh, and you're, that's where you're going to see your setting for your cart time. You guys can see the example on your screen of what you're going to see and what it's going to look like. And what cart timer does is it gives you the opportunity to set a time frame around your checkout process. So anybody who's ever made a purchase through Ticketmaster or anybody who's ever gone to see a Broadway show, right? The process is you have X amount of time that your seat is reserved, you have to put in your credit card information, or that seat goes back into the pool and back into the grabs, right? Because everybody wants that the best seat. Everybody knows somebody who waited at their computer for God knows how long this week for Trailer Swift tickets with their fingers and legs crossed, hoping for the best, right? It's a similar process that RegPack has now implemented. <laughs> and it allows you to tell the system, what's that time frame? What are you presenting to your users in order for them to process and check out? You also get to say, not only how long, but what exactly is going to be that action that's going to cause my, my timer to stop. So are they paying in full? Are they making a partial payment? Are they paying for a specific product? You have the autonomy to sort of set those levels within your system. Uh, one of the caveats that I do want to point out, and it's on the screen here, guys, is that you do have to enter it in minutes. So there's a little mathematical conversion that you're going to have to do if you want to extend, let's say, 24 hours or 48 hours. You're going to want to make sure that you're going ahead, right, and doing that 24 hours times 60 minutes or those 48 hours, whatever that hour to minute conversion is, and get that mass with displays properly. Uh, the upside is for your users, it'll show as one day or two days. It doesn't show as a ridiculous amount of minutes. We tested it with one of my clients because they were like, ooh, that, that could look funny. So from your, your user's perspective, guys, they're going to see, you know, one day or two days, but for the input you're going to put in, it is going to go ahead and be in minutes. Um, one of the things that we're going to talk about in a second as well is this abandoned item and this abandoned cart product. Uh, that is what the settings are going to be set to. Again, we'll dive into it in a little bit, but what that does is it's not going to count towards your quota, but you're going to have that data. You're going to know who put this item in their cart, who started the process and was interested in purchasing this item, but just didn't meet that time limit. They didn't go ahead and make that payment. They didn't go ahead and, and purchase that item in that time frame. You can also move them to a wait list. Uh, if you decide you want to manage the process that way and you're going to have them on your wait list, so you want to manually move them back in, if you get in contact with the family and they decide they're registering or the individual, uh, you can do that as well. Or you can have it just removed from the person's cart and you and they, you never knew it was in there. If they want to register again, they'll come back. You can see the recommended setting is always going to be abandoned cart, and we'll talk about that in a second. One other thing that I do want to point out is that this works from the back end and the front end. So if you are helping a user from the back end and you are putting a product in their cart, that timer is still active. So if you have your cart timer set for 10 minutes and you've gone in and you've done this for the person, make sure you have them on the phone. Make sure you're communicating with them. Make sure that they know that once you hit that go button, even from the back end, they have 10 minutes or 50, whatever that time frame is to go in and make that payment. You don't want to set the timer, have it expire, move them to abandon again, and have to keep going through the process. So you want to make sure that you know, you're communicating with the client and that you guys are on the same page as to when you're pulling that trigger that they are ready with sort of credit card in hand to log in and make that payment. So I think the other piece, and we're going to dive into a little bit more now, is that abandoned carts. So the nice thing about abandoned carts is it gives you the opportunity to market to users who showed interest already. You can go into your system and you can filter for users who have an abandoned cart. So you're telling the system, go ahead, please show me the users who started the process, got 90% of the way there, but just didn't finish it. And then you can do targeted marketing, right? You can go into RegPack and you can build an email for yourself. Hey, we noticed you got all the way to checkout, but you didn't hit the button. Were there questions you had about the program? Is there any additional information that we can provide you to ensure you feel comfortable and confident purchasing it. Did you have questions about the checkout? Were you confused by something, right? And then the beauty of RegPack and those emails is that you can either trigger that email to go by a status. So you go in and you take all of your people who have abandoned carts and you change that status to abandoned cart. Well, now that email is automatically going. You can manually send it and you can look up those users and push that email through. You have the autonomy to communicate with those users in a meaningful way. Again, you know them. When in the past, if somebody added something to the cart and didn't check out, either they sat there or disappeared, there wasn't the option to have that tangible data to, again, do, do follow up and really learn, learn from them and learn from those people in those processes. So that sort of talks through one of the big pieces that happened at the beginning of the year, that big release of what that flow looked like from cart timer into abandoned carts and how you can use that data. 
Uh, one of the other pieces that happened that I think sort of flew under the radar a little bit, Connor, is the upgrade to our help button, which happened earlier this year. And one of the amazing things about it now is that not only does it link you directly to the help center, where you have thousands of articles that you can sort of comb through and pick to, and we redid our help center. It's much more intuitive and easier to use. Uh, it also includes those release notes. So if you wanted to go in there and see what the heck has Regpack done this year, you can find that in that help center as well by typing in release notes. But for me, at least, one of them, Connor informed me of this, which I'm grateful for. One of the greatest things, in my opinion, is that it links to your ID number and the help center. So if you go ahead and you go into that help ticket, you'll see you have access to the help center on top, and then you have the opportunity to reach out to our support team. And you can indicate, is it a general question? Is it a billing question? Is it a payments question? You're able to type in your question, and then that email is tagged with that project number. So when it comes into our support team, they already know. They don't have to come back to you and say, oh, please clarify with us, what project is it? What are you looking to do? They can already start one foot in the door because they have that project ID. They're coming with that information one step ahead. So those are some upgrades that, that we did towards the mid middle, beginning to middle of the year that we think are, are great for you guys and can have a huge impact on your workflow and your success in utilizing Regpack. So then Connor, I'm gonna hand it on over to you to take it from sort of September down with, with some of the things that we've done. And then we're gonna briefly touch on something that's coming out relatively soon and then open up for questions. So thank you guys for, for listening to my spiel. Connor, I'm gonna go ahead and turn yeah. it on over to you. All right, um, sharing my screen. Um... Let me move my notes, and then there we go. Okay, so uh, yeah, thanks, Dina, for all of that. Um, I'm gonna mostly be focusing on tools that are connected to um, our auto bill and payment reporting. Um, a lot of there've been a lot of uh, updates uh, and, and enhancements that have com been coming out this second half of the year, but there are a couple things that I'll probably mention and bring up that we've actually had started adding in uh, as early as like February or March of this year as well. The auto build tool itself has been through quite the evolution over the past few years. It's something our team, our development team is very proud of, and definitely there are a lot of things that our clients are able to use that uniqueness to their advantage. Um, one thing I will mention that's uh, in September, uh, something that uh, a few of our clients were asking for, um, just connected to our GDPR compliance, uh, is the ability to purge uh, users. So this is something that only owner level super admins have the ability to do. Uh, it's, it's, and it's connected to that uh, GDPR compliance piece. So I believe, yeah, in this project, I have that level of access. What this does, there's a button at the bottom left. Um, I'll zoom in my screen a little bit. Um, it's not something that we would recommend on a day-to-day -day basis. It's only something you would do if somebody requests their data to be removed. Um, this does not update your order information because it's specific to personal user data. If you were looking to you know, clear like a test user or something like that, you would not use this button. You would use the status tool uh, just to archive them accordingly. That tool has not changed, it's the exact same. Um, the purge tool is only specifically if you have personal data that somebody's requesting to be removed. Um, so in the past, our development team would be able to do this, um, but now you have that control, especially for those case-by-case -case basis. Um, GDPR, there's a couple, there's a, a, a legislation in California as well. So a few different jurisdictions related to uh, data security and data privacy specifically for your end users. And that's, that's where that tool is for. Um, so now let's focus on the auto bill. Um, so I'm actually going to talk about our payments uh, section because um, there's going to be a couple things connected to that that I think are going to be helpful to take a look at. Um, for Right off the bat, you can see some things that are going to be new uh, for the past couple of months. Uh, our payments snapshot. So this gives you an idea of what's been collected, uh, what's due, uh, and then in terms of the payment plan options, uh, a little bit more detail there. Um, so I have more information now just at a glance. It's a bit of a dashboard that's connected to our payments tab. Uh, there's also now a dashboard uh, from the auto bill tool that's very similar to this, um, which you're able to look at as well. Um, but again, summarizing at the, at the big picture, what your numbers are looking like, um, if there are any things that you need to follow up on. So for example, if there's somebody who's overdue or anything like that, it's, it's easier to see that at a glance, how many of those there are. Um, on that note, uh, I'm going to mention in terms of uh, uh, the 
some, some specific reporting on uh, payment plans specifically. Uh, this is something that we actually introduced earlier in the year, which is a filter connected to auto bill, uh, uh, auto bill details. So when it comes to uh, payment plans, um, something that, you know, it's really helpful if you do have people who are, you know, you're managing different types of plans, different people on different schedules. Uh, at a glance, now you can easily filter for when somebody is overdue, um, if they're on a payment plan. Uh, you can also use this tool to combine filters such as like they have a balance, but they're not on auto bill. That's something that's really important to see. Oh, they have a balance, but they're not scheduled to pay that balance. Let me make sure to get in front of that, either adding them to a plan or uh, having them go in to pay in full. Um, and then, of course, that uh, payment overdue, um, something that's very helpful. Uh, one thing that is also pretty helpful uh, is to sometimes people would want to update their payment method or something changes once they've enrolled in a plan and that on auto bill without a payment method i don't know if we have examples in this desk side chat project i guess we do um so something where it's, it's helpful to know that right like they they're on a schedule um but they don't have a way to, to meet that schedule so let's make sure to get in front of that there um so now um I'll touch on the auto bill dashboard itself because uh, that sort of summarizes a lot of those tools. Um, here we go. Uh, so again, it looks very similar to the payment snapshot, except all of these details are connected to the payment plan schedules themselves, not going towards your totals if there are people who are not currently enrolled in the payment plan. Um, so the auto bill tool itself has gone in terms of your reporting and the data that you're getting out of it, you get a lot more control. It's really easy to follow up with and that makes it easy to offer that level of flexibility to your applicants, right? It's something that, uh, I mean, the tool itself is ultimately designed to make sure that you can provide applicants that flexibility, but still follow up with them and, and make sure that you're still getting paid on time. Um, and now we have more tools to make sure that you're continuing to do that in a very easy streamlined way. Um, which does, I think, uh, Dean, unless you think I'm missing anything, bring us to what's upcoming. Um, yeah, so upcoming, you may have already gotten a notice, or if you've logged into RegPack uh, this week, you may have seen uh, a pop-up about it, uh, our system auto bill tool. Um, so this is something that basically makes that design, makes it even more sort of seamless for the applicant. The idea is that they have a couple of predetermined payment plans that are built in for them to select at checkout. This is an option that's gonna be upcoming uh, in, a, in a new release from our development team. So first I'm gonna show you what it could look like for your applicants at checkout. This is a screenshot of what that looks right now, uh, or <laughs> in the release, it's not what it looks like right now. It's uh, not live yet. Um, and so here you can see the default setting is that there are options to pay in installments at checkout. So they can choose, I can pay the full balance now, or I can choose how many installments I have. And so you can control, uh, once the system auto bills are live, you'll be able to control if you wanna have all of those different options or specific options. For example, if you don't wanna have the 12 installments, you can take that out, but still have the other system auto bill plans. That's something that you would have an option to control from the auto bill module. Um, we do also have a uh, help article, uh, which will be available for you uh, especially helpful when it's live in terms of explaining what this is. Um, and this is the tool where, you know, I was describing if you wanted to disable a specific plan um, and then going into if, if it's not working for your model, there is still just the regular old auto build tool um, with all of those controls that we already have and have helped our clients already. Um, so to turn that off, that will be completely, that would be a project setting. Uh, you'll have options. You'll see what it looks like on your page when it's live. Um, and you do have that control to, um, to choose whether to use it uh, across the board, specific plans, or not at all, and just continue to use our regular payment plan tool. Okay. Um, so that's 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 a lot, lot of auto bill, a lot of exciting auto bill stuff. And overall, um, sort of, you know, we're going into our future release schedule. A lot of things that our Absolutely. development team is really excited about um, coming into the end of the year and into 2023. Um, so I think with that, um, I can go ahead and, we can open it up for questions. Um, I'll go ahead and pause the recording so we can uh, share that with everybody. But before I do, our next desk side chat is going to be a really fun one, that is a, a, a quiz going over everything that we've, we've talked about, and there will be lots of prizes for everybody who's gonna participate. So I hope to see you all there. <laughs>